everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I want to show you something new in the all-new version of Adobe Photoshop. This is version uh, 22. The uh, previous version was version 21. This is an extremely major update. There's a lot of cool new features in here, and I'll be showing you those features and videos to come. But today, I wanted to focus on the sky replacement. Now we have sky replacement in Photoshop, and it works really well. I have three different examples examples to show you today. I'm excited about this. If you haven't uh, updated your Photoshop in the Creative Cloud, you need to do that. But hey, let's check out this sky replacement. Without any further ado, let's get started. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Now, where does the sky replacement filter live? It lives right up here under edit and sky replacement. Now, today I have three images for you, and I tried to find three stock images that would really be kind of um, challenging for a sky replacement. So I have this uh, image right here with the tree. So this is going to be challenging to get around the tree here. Then I have one of the Golden Gate Bridge. So we have the bridge, uh, all the lines and the cables and the bridge and things like that. I thought that would be a challenge for it. And the last image is these folks on the beach here. And so we got a lot of hair and things like this. You know, the sky back here is easy to replace, but around the hair and stuff, that could be a bit challenging. So I have these three images. So we're going to start out with the uh, tree image first. Let's have some fun. So we'll come up here to edit and find sky replacement and click on that and Let's see what happens here. Voila, like magic, we have a sky replaced. Really cool stuff, right? Now, we'll notice up here, see where it says sky, you have this little drop-down menu here, and if you click it, you're going to get, it's going to show you the last skies you've used. It's good. It gives you a collection of some skies, and then you can add your own skies. See this little plus here? You can add skies here. You can give yourself a new group. So you don't have to just use the skies that Photoshop give you. You can use your own skies, which is really cool, and that's very important. But here's your blue skies collection. They give you, what, nine different skies you can use, a spectacular collection of skies, like a rainbow, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, different dramatic skies. We'll just click through some of these. But, you know, you want to find a sky that works with your image, by the way. Uh, then we have some sunsets here. So we have a lot of cool choices here. But let's, let's go with a blue sky. I think a blue sky is going to be good. So let's click on one right here. Okay, then we can just have like a plain blue sky. That may be cool. And let's just click through and find one that we like. I kind of like that one. Is the sky is the lighting in the right direction? It's hard for me to tell sometimes. I think it's coming from the right on this one. So that sky looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Now then you have to take into consider into consideration things like, you know, is the sky too sharp compared with the rest of the image? And a bit later in this video, I'll show you how to blur the sky replacement. But say we like the sky, we want to use it. And we have all these different controls here. Now, if you need to flip your sky to get the lighting right, you can just come here with where it says flip. There's a little checkbox. Give that a click and you can flip the sky. OK, so let's flip it back because I think the lights coming again from the right here, which would match the scene here. Now we can shift the edge here. We can fade the edge. Now, if I take the fade in like this, it's going to let more of the sky replacement show through the whole way through on the image. In other words, down here, it's not faded at this point. Now, watch when I move this edge to the right. And it defaults the whole way up at 100%. See how it just kind of fades in? And I find, just by playing around with this, that the fade to the whole way to the right generally works well. Sometimes you can move it back a little bit, and but you want to play with it. You know, it's like any, any editing software, you got to play with it. And then, of course, we have brightness, sky brightness adjustments, so we can brighten up the sky or darken the sky to the left, whichever way we want to go here. And again, you got to play around to get it where you want it. You can warm the sky up by moving the temperature to the right. You can cool it down by moving it to the left. So you have all that choice. And I might just warm it. Let's maybe just warm it up a little bit because we got a lot of warm colors down here. Let's warm it up a little bit. You can adjust the scale, make the sky replacement, you know, larger or smaller. And you'll notice we have the move tool here. So you can, you know, click and drag up, down, whatever. You can move the sky around. So you have a lot of flexibility here. In other words, I'll just show you. See that, how you can move it? Hey, look, that was a beach scene. So you can move it. And again, you could scale it like this, move it to the right and make it larger. 
or whatever you need to do. And then you can move it around. So you have full access here. Really cool stuff. And then we come to the foreground adjustments. And you have lighting mode. You have two different lighting modes. You have a multiply lighting mode. And you have a screen lighting mode. And you can see what ha what's happening. Now this is dealing with the foreground. Foreground adjustments, right? See how it's lightening everything up there? Um, I generally find that the multiply is generally what you're going to use. But now we can take this lighting adjustment, drag it to the right. It'll darken the scene to the right. It'll lighten the foreground to the left. And so just again, you want to adjust it to where it looks right. Somewhere around there. Now this color adjustment here, this is not like a typical like saturation adjustment. Uh, whereas if I would move it to the right, it would become more saturated. Move it to the left, it becomes less saturated. That's not how it works. It's more of a, more of a um, think of it as a tint adjustment. Basically, what you're trying to do is match up the scene. See how it's getting more green in the foreground when I move it to the right? And if I move it to the left, because I think this is actually working with color balance. Okay, so you're basically balancing out the color of your image to where you think it looks right. So just adjust it. And when you think it looks right, you're good to go. Now, you have some choices here for output. You can output to new layers, and that's what I recommend. Or you can duplicate the layer. And so I'm going to output it to new layers. I'm going to click OK, and I'll show you what happens here. When you do, you get a group called Sky Replacement Group. Okay, now you could collapse that group like that. And you can do a before and after by clicking the group eyeball on and off. But what a job that's done. I'm really impressed. But here's all your controls in here. Here's your sky brightness. So if I shut this eyeball off, you can see the change. And uh, sky temperature, you can see the difference there. Now, if you click on here, you'll see we're using a uh, color balance to do the sky temperature. We're using a brightness contrast control to do the um, sky brightness. And the foreground color we're using. No, we're using a curves. I thought we were using a color balance, but we're using a curves. And we're using the colors of the curves here. In other words, there's the red. See how it's altered it here? Here's the green. Didn't do anything on the green. And let's try the blue didn't touch the blue, so it only affected the red. But that's what those sliders were doing. It's affecting a curves adjustment. So pretty cool stuff. Now, you remember I told you, what if this sky was too uh, in focus and the background was a little bit out of focus? You could click on this layer right here where it says sky and make sure the image is selected and not the mask. And then you could come up here to uh, filter and choose like a some kind of a blurring type filter. I would generally use probably like Gaussian blur like this. And see, there's some Gaussian blur at 4.2 pixels. I could drag it more to the right and blur it out more. But I'm thinking maybe that right around that four would be good. See, it gives it a slight blur to kind of match the background. Maybe just a little bit more. Maybe something like that looks pretty natural. You just want it to look natural. So you can uh, adjust the blur in the background. But you're going to have to do it after you do the sky replacement. Do it on the layers here. Now, if I option or alt click on the sky layer mask right here, you can actually see the layer mask that, it, it, that is created. And you can go here and touch up this layer mask, which is really cool. So that's our first image. What do you think? Hey, leave me comments and questions in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. Let's move on to our second image. Uh, and that's the Golden Gate Bridge. And let's go back up to edit and click on sky replacement and see what it does. Now it remembers the last guy you used and it'll put that on the image right there. But look at the job with the cabling here in the Golden Gate Bridge. Man, that, that's perfect, really. I'm not saying that's the right sky for the image, but that sky may work. Now we got to look at our lighting here. So our lighting's coming from the left, and you can see it on the bridge here. And all, by the way, there's a preview here. I don't know if I showed you that before, but there's a preview. You can see the before and after. But you can see the light on the left side of the bridge here. So we definitely have to have our sky going in the right direction. So let's click uh, the sky back on. And like on this one, I'd probably have to flip it. But that's not the sky I want. I have a sky in mind here. It was more... I think it was this guy right here. And again, these are the last uh, skies you've used. And it's this guy right here. I thought that may work out nice on this image here. And uh, let's see what the rainbow looks like. There's the rainbow. So that's kind of fun. And then we have these other skies down here. Let's try this one. Yeah, that one would maybe work as well. You know, if you just didn't want clouds in your sky, that could work. I'm going to go ahead and go with this one here. 
Now let's just see what we need to do here to adjust it. I find that I don't have to really mess with the shift edge too much at all. I, don't, I haven't really found a need to use it yet, which is a good thing. But the fade... See, when I move it the whole way to the left, if you look in this area here, you can see a little bit of a halo there. So by moving the fade to the right, cleans up any like haloing and things like that. And it just, it's just fading the original sky in with the um, new sky at the horizon there. So it's pretty nice. So I'm going to move this again up. And I find a lot of times you can just leave it right where it is. And now we can adjust the sky brightness. Do we need to lighten it up? Now let's look at the original and see how bright that's. See, that sky was pretty bright. So I want to keep it kind of in line with what that was originally. So I'm going to lighten this up maybe a little bit. And yeah, maybe right there. And then we can play with the temperature. Let's warm it. Let's uh, cool it. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it right where it was right there. I might just pull the brightness back. Just a tiny wee bit right there. And now let's play with our foreground. And let's make sure also that our light's coming the right way. Yeah, so I can see that it's the shadows on the right. So the light is coming from the left. So we're good there. And let's try the uh, lighting blend mode. Right now it's a multiply where it defaults out here screen. I don't think screen's going to work. No, nope, it's not going to work. Let's keep it in multiply. Let's work with the lighting adjustment. Now, moving this lighting adjustment to the right will darken the foreground. Now, we're in the foreground area here. Moving it to the left will lighten the foreground. So, I think I want to darken the foreground area just a little bit. And again, we're just trying to get this thing to match up. But what a beautiful job it's doing. Now, there's a lot of haze back in here. So, I may want to give this guy a little bit of a blur in, in the end. Now, let's play with the color adjustment. Remember, this is working with the curves adjustment to balance out the colors of the image. Do I want to go more to the right? We're not seeing a whole lot of change take place there, but I'm going to take the color adjustment a little bit to the right. We're going to output it to new layers. Click OK. And now let's just come to the sky right here. Let's click on the sky. Make sure you click on the pixels. Let's come up here to filter and let's do a Gaussian blur again. Find it, Dave. <laughs> Gaussian blur. There you are. And let's Give it a little more blur. That's way too much. Maybe a 4.5. Let's settle for that and click OK. And, oh, this layer. I didn't show you this layer right here, but this is your, let me move this over. This is your foreground lighting here. And uh, let's take a look at it right here. Let me option click this eyeball so you can see it. Okay. It looks like it's using some kind of a blur on there, but... Also, it's uh, this is the one that is in the multiply. Remember when we were doing our adjustments, the multiply blend mode? This is one that will be either screen or multiply. Okay. So, I don't really see a need for touching this one. Let's click it on and off and see. Yeah, see how things are lighter here? It's helping things blend in. So, that's what they're doing there. I haven't quite totally figured it all out, but I pretty much understand what everything's doing except this one. Now, we could come here to say like the sky brightness and click on here and we can go ahead and readjust this brightness if we want to. So, even after we've made our adjustments and accepted accepted them, we can come back and change things. So, that's that's really cool. So, let's take let's click this group replace sky replacement group. Here's the before and here's the after. So, there's our second image. Now, on to the third image, which is these folks on the beach. Let's go a little quicker on this one. Let's go to edit and sky replacement. It remembers our last sky, which doesn't really match the scene. And I think I have a sky in mind. I think it's either this sky. I kind of like that. I like the softness in the background. And I think I'm going to go with this sky here. Now, the lighting's coming from the right, front right. So we're going to have to flip this sky. Yeah, now we're in the right direction. The lighting is coming from the right-hand side. Now, let's look at our edge and everything. I don't think we have to touch the fade edge. But look what it's doing around the hair, man. What a fantastic job. I can't believe it. It's really great. Now, let's... Uh, Let's look at the original sky. It's pretty light, so I may want to lighten the sky up a little bit, so we'll go to sky adjustments. Let's lighten up that sky just a little bit, just to match the scene. Then we can play with the temperature. We can warm it to the right, cool it to the left. I'm just going to slightly warm it, very, very slightly. 
I'm not going to touch the scale where everything looks good there. I'm going to leave it in the multiply blend mode and for the lighting mode. And let's see the foreground lighting. Move this to the right. It darkens it. Move it to the left. It lightens it. I might lighten that foreground up just a little bit. Maybe somewhere right there. And let's play with the color adjustment. Moving it to the left, I think. It's not doing a whole lot, but I think it's warming it up a little bit to the left. So I'm going to move it to the left just slightly. Let's click OK. I'm not going to touch anything here. The blur is good on the sky. Let's go to the sky replacement group. Here's the before and here's the after. So it did a fantastic job. I am so happy with this new sky replacement in Photoshop. Thanks, Adobe. You did a great job here. Well, there it is, Sky Replacement, right inside Adobe Photoshop 2021. I'm really excited about this. It's doing a fantastic job. I'll run some more image tests on it, but so far, so good. These were kind of tough images, and it handled them wonderfully with, as you saw, very little effort here on my part. So I hope you give this a try. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. As I said, there's a lot of other new features. I'll have some of those other new features presented in future videos. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.